I am the vine, you are the branches, and my Father is the vine grower. Jesus says to his disciples, and when does he say this? Does anybody know when he says this, other than in the 15th chapter of the Gospel of John? Like a specific time that this happens. When does this happen? Then say it louder. Yes. Thank you. He's preparing to be arrested. Actually, a few chapters later from now, he's going to sit down with the disciples and wash their feet in the Gospel of John. But here he is, in the last hours of his freedom, walking with the disciples, more than likely through a vineyard. How many of you have ever been in a vineyard? And you look at the branches and the vines and all that stuff, and the branches are all how? They're like straight branches, and you can easily distinguish one branch from another, right? No. They're twisted and knotted and all supporting each other and all twisted together in all sorts of different ways. And you can't tell one branch from the other. And Jesus is probably walking through this vineyard with his disciples, knowing exactly what's going to happen in a few hours. That he's going to be handed over, put on trial, and then killed. He also knows what's going to happen to these disciples, right? That they're going to be arrested, put on trial, and most of them martyred for their faith. He knows all of this, going into this. And he tells them this, walking through the vineyard. You are the branches of this wonderful vine that my Father is the vine dresser of. And every branch that abides in me has fruit and bears fruit. And every branch that doesn't bear fruit gets cut off. And every branch that bears fruit gets what? Pruned, which means what? Cut. Guess what? You're not going to avoid getting cut. Everybody gets cut. We all get pruned. We all get cut back. Because if you don't cut back the branches, the wild growth doesn't produce good fruit. And the vine dresser knows that. And we can look around our world and see all kinds of pruning today, right? The earthquake in Nepal, all the stuff that's happening in Baltimore, all of the stuff around the world that we wonder why in the world do these things happen? And why do these things happen? The answer to that question is, I don't think there is an answer to that question. And when we can actually get an answer to why do those things happen, it's not going to matter. Because the kingdom will come to fruition and we'll be with God. And that's really what this lesson is about this morning. Or at least that's what I got from this lesson this morning. How many of you noticed how many times the word abide happened in all of our lessons this morning? Specifically in the gospel lesson. How many times did the word abide happen in the gospel lesson? Can anybody tell me without looking at your bulletin and counting real quick? How many? Eight. Eight. It happens eight times in three verses. And actually, this whole section, next week we get verses 9 through 17 of the Gospel of 15th chapter of the Gospel of John. And the, the word abide occurs 11 times in the first 17 verses of the gospel, of 15th chapter of the Gospel of John. But this morning, it's eight times in our English translation. And I want to tell you that it's not actually in there eight times, it's only in there seven, according to the Greek. Because the beginning of verse 4, right? In verse 4, 6, 4, 5, 6, and 7. It's actually four verses. Sorry, my math was a little off there earlier. It's four verses that it occurs eight times. Verse 4 starts, Abide in me as I abide in you, is what our English translation says, right? I want to tell you this morning that that's not exactly what that says. But before we get to that, let's talk for a moment about first loves. How many of you remember your very first love? Right? Back in second grade. Okay, maybe it wasn't second grade. Back in whatever grade it was. Do you remember that? That person who you would pine over? Is that a word that you, you young people know? <laughs> that you would wait to see in the halls, right? Or if you, if, if you were in a school where you changed classes, like middle school, you would, you would actually seek them out. In the class changes, you'd go to see them, right? Just to catch a glimpse of them, right? That person that you would do any, absolutely anything for, that they were the, the whole of your existence. 
You existed in life to, to make them happy and to see them and to be a part of their life, right? And then what happened? You Two weeks later or the next day, you grew out of that, right? But that first love, do you remember that feeling? That person that you would do absolutely anything for. And that's exactly the way that Jesus feels about you. Every moment of every day. And that's what verse 4 says. Jesus says to the disciples, abide in me. Our English translation says, abide in me as I abide in you. According to the Greek, though, Jesus said to them, abide in me as I'm in you. It's not... Jesus isn't telling them to abide in Him or to... What does abide mean? Reside, live, dwell, be in. Jesus isn't telling them to live in me like I'm living in you. Jesus is telling them to be living in me as I am already in you. Whether you decide to live in me or not, guess what? I'm there. It's just the same relationship that the branch has to the vine, right? The branches in a vineyard are all intertwined and twined together. But no branch makes the decision which other branch should be cut. No branch makes the decision which other branch needs to be removed. No branch makes the decision on which other branch needs to be trimmed back or or moved over a little bit. That's the vine dresser. And all of those branches are dependent upon what? Just the vine. It's not about us looking at other people and wondering where they're at. It's about us being connected and abiding in Jesus Christ. Because all of those branches are intertwined and supporting each other, but that's all they're doing. They're not making decisions on which vine is better than the other. They're not making decisions on which vine or which branch is producing better fruit than the other. That's up to God. But those branches intertwined abide and thrive and totally live only in Jesus, which is how each and every one of us should. Because Jesus loves us like that first love. You are His first love. Every last one of us is Jesus' first love. Right? I bet if I asked each and every one of you right now, what is the name of that person? Most of you could tell me. Right? You know who that person is. Regardless of the fact that you, some of you have been happily married now for many years, you still know the name of that person. And that's exactly how you are to Jesus. Jesus always knows your name. And the cross is something that shows to prove exactly how much He loves you. The cross is the way that God exactly shows us and gives us an example of how deep and how wide His love is for each and every one of us. That Jesus would come and suffer a death so that we could have life in Him. It's about abiding in Jesus, living in Jesus, just as Jesus already lives in you. It's not a threat. It's a promise. Dwell in me as I am living in you. Be a branch that's connected only to Jesus, supporting the community around you, but only worrying about your existence with Jesus. Because in doing that, the the vine is going to be stronger. The branches are going to be stronger. And we are going to live into the life that Christ has given to us, remembering that He loves you way more than we could ever possibly imagine. So go into the world and show them how connected we are. But mainly focus on your connection with Christ, because that is what will feed you. That is where you will thrive. And in that, we as a body will also thrive together.